how many moles of magnesium sulfate are soluble in 25 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius? Someone want to look up the molar mass of magnesium sulfate for me while we get started? So to answer this question, all right, we've got 30 degrees Celsius. So at 30 degrees Celsius and magnesium sulfate, we're right about there. Work our way across. So that means I can hold 40 grams of magnesium sulfate in 100 grams of water. We only have 25 grams of water. So we have one fourth the amount of water. That means I'm gonna have one fourth the amount of magnesium sulfate. So one fourth of 40 grams is 10 grams of magnesium sulfate. How many moles is that, All right? Thank you for looking up the molar mass for us, right? I've got 10 grams of magnesium sulfate, and I know the molar mass is 120.3676 um, grams per one mole. Grams cancel out, and 10 divided by 120.3676. Right, I get about 0 0.083 moles of magnesium sulfate. So choice C there for question one. Question two, right, a scuba diver descends from one depth where the atmospheric pressure is one ATM to a lower depth where the atmospheric pressure is 1.5 ATM. How many more moles of nitrogen per liter are dissolved in the scuba diver's bloodstream at the lower depth, given that the Henry's law constant for nitrogen is 6.1 times 10 to the minus four. So for that, we wanna look up, right? Our equation is the solubility of a gas. Equals the constant for the gas times the pressure of the gas. So scuba diver descends from one depth, the atmospheric pressure of one ATM to a lower depth, the atmospheric pressure is 1.5. How many more moles of nitrogen per liter are dissolved? So we wanna do this calculation twice. We're gonna do this calculation at one ATM, and then we're gonna do this calculation at 1.5 ATM to find the difference in solubility. So, yep, this equation is on the exam. It's on the practice exam, All right? Solubility at one, ATM equals 6.1 times 10 to the minus four moles per liter atmosphere times one ATM. Do the same calculation at 1.5 ATM to basically see we're gonna have half as much or, or yeah, more solubility of the gas equals 6.1 times 10 to the minus four moles liter atmosphere times 1.5 ATM. So 6.1 times 10 to the minus four times 1.5. All right, so here our solubility is 6.1 times 10 to the minus four. And then up here, our solubility is um, 9.15 times 10 to the minus four. So because it's asking how many more moles per liter are dissolved, I would subtract those two to find the difference. So I'm gonna subtract. 6.1 times 10 to the minus four 
to see that the difference is basically, you know, the change in the moles of nitrogen is, you know, 3.05 times 10 to the minus four is the difference between those two for question two. For question three, we did this on Friday and yeah, a couple people had some questions about this. I've gotten a few emails about question three as well. Staline solution used in medical application consists of nine grams of sodium chloride per liter of solution. What is the molality, right? Molality is moles per kilogram solvent. Um, so the mistake that people are making is they're just assuming, oh, okay, I've got one kilogram because it's telling me I've got one liter. Well, the mass, the density of this is not one because it's not just pure water. It's a sodium chloride solution. I don't need to know the density of NaCl that has nothing to do with this calculation. So step one, we have to find moles of sodium chloride. So I've got nine grams of sodium chloride. The molar mass of sodium chloride is um, 55.44 grams per one mole. Fifty-eight point four five. So nine divided by, I've got 0.1539 moles of NaCl. And then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna find the mass of the solution. So the whole solution, if I have one liter of that solution, that's a thousand milliliters. And I know that the density of this for one milliliter, I've got 1.005 grams. So this whole solution is a thousand and five grams, but that is the solution. Right, that's water plus the sodium chloride. So I want to subtract the nine grams of NaCl, and that's going to give me 996 grams of water. And that's what we want to do and use for our molality. Right, so molality, I'm kind of running out of space here, but um, I've got. 0.1539 moles of sodium chloride, and I have that dissolved in 0.996 kilograms of water. So 0.996, and yeah, we get pretty much about the same number. Um, I get a molality of, you know, about 0.155 molal for question three. One, two, three, and then question four. Maybe just two significant figures, Dave. Yeah, maybe 3.1, looking at everything else now. Well, it shouldn't be 3.1, right? It should be 3.1 e to the five, e to the minus four, sorry. I can look in a second after I record this. Question four, right? Calculate the molality of the solution prepared by dissolving 14.8 grams of copper nitrate in 501. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I didn't know if question three was going to have variables or question two is going to have variables or not. That's a good point. Um, question four, can someone look up the molar mass of copper nitrate for me? Copper two nitrate. Thank you, Molly and Madison. All right, so copper two nitrate is 187.56 grams per one mole. All right, we've got 14.8 grams divided by 187.56. So 0 0.0789 moles and our molality is that many moles, 0 0.0789 moles in 0 0.501 kilograms of water, right? We wanna convert grams to kilograms. So divide that by 0 0.501 to see that our solution is about 0.158 mole out. Um, I would go to three significant figures on this one because 14.8 is three sig figs, 501 is three sig figs as well. All right, question five, I think it asks us which one of these is gonna have the lowest vapor pressure. Uh, the lowest vapor pressure is gonna have the highest boiling point, All right? So, to answer this, they all have the same molality. We wanna know the Van Hoff factor for each of these. So the Van Hoff factor for methanol is one, acetic acid is one, ethanol is one, sodium chloride is two, and sodium sulfate ionizes to give us two sodiums and one sulfate going to have the largest Van Hoff factor. So if we think about the delta TB equals I times my boiling point constant times my molality, I'm going to plug in the largest number there. KB is going to be the same for all of these because they're aqueous solutions. Our molality is the same for all of these as well. So really it's the Van Hoff factor um, that would give us the highest boiling point for solution E, the highest boiling point has the lowest vapor pressure, right? Because the lower the vapor pressure, the higher the boiling point needs to be, the higher I have to raise that temperature to bring that sample to a boil. Correct, Rochelle, right? B and C, A, B, and C are all molecular car compounds. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, non-metal, 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 all molecular compounds. All right, and then question six is related to that. Ethanol has a boiling point of 78.4 degrees. What's the boiling point of a two molal solution of glucose dissolved in ethanol? So we want to say and do the same calculation, right? Delta TB equals our Van Hoff. KB times our molality. So the change in boiling point equals, it tells you, well, glucose, it's gonna have a Van Hoff factor of one. It's a molecular compound. They tell you the boiling point constant for ethanol is 1.22 degrees Celsius per molal. And they tell you the molality of the solution is two. So just be careful. Um, maybe molality is gonna be different here on your question. Maybe it's not the exact same as my molality. Uh, so two times 1.22, all right, so I get a change in boiling point of 2.44 degrees Celsius. My original boiling point is 78. So that means my final boiling point is gonna be something like 80.5. Eight four degrees Celsius for this ethanol glucose solution. 